If you've been thinking about getting one of these front mount brush cutters, you're definitely going to want to watch this video. Now I've had this TV Flex, which I converted to be in front of the tractor for about two years now. This is an unsponsored review, so you're going to get an honest assessment and a demo of how good it works. Now this is what it originally looked like when it was brand new two years ago. And as you can see, that is a lot of weight off to the side of the tractor. So first off, right off the bat, let me tell you that the TB Flex is normally offset way over here. And it says on there, your tractor needs to be 3,000 pounds. Well, this tractor is more like 4,000 pounds. But it was still too light and was constantly trying to flip over the tractor. So you could, actually, you could do a ditch with it. However, it really didn't work that well for that. But this front cutter is the exact same front cutter that's on everything else. The nice thing about the TB Flex is that the side actually pivots completely up at 90 degrees and you can go along the side of uh, driveways and fields and stuff like that and cut at a perfectly up and down straight angle. But in order to fix the flip over issue and then also you really can't drive through the woods with the TB Flex wing on. Uh, it's just way too wide to fit between trees, turning around is almost impossible and there's all all the weight for the entire tractor gets shifted up to the one front tire and you get stuck if it's wet at all even though you have four wheel drive it just doesn't work out very well unless you specifically only want to do the sides of driveways now so what i did for that is i actually ordered a quick attach bracket and then i welded some attachment points on here these top ones work with the existing uh, holes that are on the trailblazer already. I took the flex wing off which attaches right here through those holes and still have that. So I still have full functional uh, of the flex if I need it. However, for normal usage this is the way to use it. You want it in front of you that way it's balanced and it fits a lot better through trees. Now it's powered off the PTO which has a pump down there you will need like a six inch extension in order to make that fit right because it doesn't go far enough into the guard without it. And then this is the reservoir and the filter which then pumps to the hydraulic motor up front and that's how it works. Now let me do a little time lapse for you to show you exactly how this thing works. This time lapse is 30 minutes uh, at 10 times speed. So it's actually going to show it to you in just about three minutes. And you're going to see just how much you can get done in a 30 minute time period with this machine. Stick around after the time lapse because I'm going to show you a couple tricks on how to do the really big trees so that it doesn't bog down the tractor or uh, stop the blade completely and how you can get a good finish on those stumps really low. Uh, I'll also show you um, a close-up at ground level of the field so you can see how low it's cutting it and just give you a good idea of how much work you can get done in that time period.
So this is just an idea. I had the uh, camera set up on the truck there of how much space you can do in 30 minutes. Uh, I'd say this is probably 100 by 100. So that seems to be about the rate of work, uh, about three hours per acre. If you were really pushing it, I guess you could get three acres done in one day. Mainly what your limiting factor is, is the cooling on the power unit on the back. If you use this for four or five hours straight, it will get up above 200 degrees and you really don't want to go any hotter. Otherwise you risk damage to that pump. If it's a cool day though, you can do pretty much all day long if it's in the 70s. Uh, if it's in the 90s, about three hours is about all you want to do. Just to show you size perspective, there's the tractor. And this is not a small tractor, this is a 38 horsepower. And it's a pretty good size and as you can see the brush is taller than the tractor and you can hide the tractor completely inside the brush and this is basically what it turns it into this is just to show you how much i got done last week with just two or three hours for two or three days uh, it seems like it's about three hours per acre and you can see it cuts it down pretty low i am driving my truck over it just fine now This is just a quick little demo and show, to show you how to cut down these big trees. Uh, this one is that same tree from the earlier part of the video. It's about 18 foot tall, I'd imagine. So the first thing you want to do is you want to bring your RPMs up on the tractor. The faster the blades are spinning, the better it handles this big stuff. And then you lift it up high enough to where you can actually chop it because the top really doesn't matter. Um, that will break up real easy anyway and then after you chop it down you do what I'm doing right here which is just rock back and forth and take six to eight inches at a time because that actually splinters the wood into splinters instead of cutting big logs and uh, big logs will flop up and hit the bottom of your truck or the bottom of your tractor or kick into the deck and clog everything up and get the blade stuck so you don't want those uh, long term it's definitely best to do a little splintering here, and that way they decompose really fast. Now these trees were every bit of three inches thick, and there was multiple of them. And as you can see, you're able to take it basically right down to the dirt, just by chopping off a little bit each time, back and forth. Here's a good picture of how thick that is. And the rest of this top will chop up real easy. But that is my preferred method for the big trees. It's easier on the machine than just trying to hit it all in one go. And it basically turns everything into mulch instead of leaving giant chunks everywhere. So I've had this thing for two years now and even despite me modifying it, I've had zero issues with it. Uh, if you take the blade apart, you can actually see the uh, woodruff key is wearing out a little bit, uh, the groove that it goes into. But with how many hours I've got on this thing, I really don't think that's a big deal. Uh, I've probably got around 100 hours of work on this. So I think that's pretty good uh, for just having a little issue like that. Let me know if you guys want a detailed video on how I modified the flex wing uh, or how to hook it up. So my overall impression on this thing has been pretty good, uh, it's lasted pretty well and it is by far the cheapest of this style that you can get. Um, I believe the front cutter, uh, which was a flex at the time, cost me $3,300 and then the power pack on the back cost around $1,500. Uh, so $4,800 bucks all in and I've definitely gotten the money, money's worth out of that. If you look behind me, anything that's clear was all done by this. And I would say total maximum six hours doing all that. And if you look in the distance there, that's how it started out. So definitely worth it in my opinion. Let me know if you have any thoughts, questions down in the comments. Well, that's all. Hope this was helpful to you. If you have any questions, please ask them in the comments. Um, if you have any ideas about cooling this thing off and keeping it a little bit cooler, a way to do that, let me know. 